All right, so now let's just hear it without EQ. So this is without EQ, kind of flat. Again, this mic doesn't sound bad at all, but now when we add the EQ, it's really kind of brightening my voice, kind of bringing that liveliness to it. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Beatwalker and welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna to be looking at Voice Meter Potato and what it has to offer to make your mic or any mic for that matter sound better using some of the features. So I did a video previously using Voice Meter Banana. It doesn't have as many features as Potato does, but if you want to check that out, just using the free features that Voice Meter Banana offers, then you can use that and be good to go. But again, Voice Meter Potato is donationware, so you can pay something as little as $10. So if you want to upgrade uh, it does have a lot more features. I've discussed in previous videos on why I think voice meter potato is absolutely necessary. If you're already familiar with voice meter banana, I want to step up your game a little bit. So I'll link this down below and they're not sponsoring me or anything. I've just used this software for a long time. I think it's great. Feel free to support them if you want. So today I'm using the Behringer XM8500. This is around a 30-ish dollar microphone from what Amazon has right now. I'm sure you could find it a little bit cheaper some other places out there, but this typically is one of the microphones that everybody, a lot of reviewers have, have talked about this microphone and how good it is. And I think it's a great sounding mic out of the box. Again, it is budget friendly microphone. Now keep in mind that it is an XLR only microphone. So you will need an audio interface like this guy, uh, Focusrite Scarlett Solo, which is this guy right here. So you will need a audio interface to be able to run this thing. Now, you don't necessarily have to go with a $100 audio interface, but I would definitely recommend not going cheap on an audio interface because it's your sound and I, I think it makes a huge difference. I think the lowest that I've gone to where you're getting a great quality audio interface is like this Behringer Euphoria. Uh, I had this one for a while and it sounded great. The only downside to this one, in my opinion, is this USB connector, which is a uh, type B. I hate these connectors. I have them all on my audio gear and they're just flimsy. But if you're just keeping it in one spot, not moving around too much, it should be fine. But yeah, that's just another option for you. I'll link all these down below if you want to check them out. But in the previous video, I used a Mayano USB microphone only. It was a USB only. And I did realize that USB microphones just give me the most amount of problems with audio for whatever reason. I've had that experience with just strictly USB microphones. So I would always suggest that you either go with a dual USB XLR, um, like the two other uh, Fafine microphones I've reviewed, great microphones. And again, you can switch them from XLR if you're set at home, like the way I am, use XLR. And then if you're on the road, you do have that additional option, but I wouldn't necessarily start with just the USB microphone if you're really trying to step up your audio game. With that being said, here is the setup. So again, you should be on your input device, which is your microphone and make sure you're setting that up there. So I'll go left to right here and I'll explain what all of this is for the most part. I'm not going to touch too much on the effects because I just don't think they're that great here in voice meter they're a little useful if you just want to mess around but as far as just regular auto quality i wouldn't use this i would use something like discord or any other type of effects tool because this is your main audio source and quality check i wouldn't use it for something like echo or effects or anything i would use something else for that what i would suggest with compressor is less is more on this because what you're going to notice is when you start climbing here it gets a little aggressive. So I think the sweet spot is gonna be between one and two. You don't wanna go higher. So I'm just gonna leave it at one just to give it a little boost. Uh, what this does is just kind of levels out all your audio sound or levels out your voice coming in and out of the microphone so you don't have the peaks and lows. Um, it just kind of keeps it level. So, but again, less is more. If you put too much, it's gonna, it's gonna peak quite a bit. So just keep that kind of low there. All right, moving on to the gate. Uh, the gate's another one where you kind of have to adjust based on what your background noise is. So if I just take a listen and I'll just talk again. 
So I don't have too much background noise, but if you have something like a fan or your PC is right next to your desk and you hear this um, like steady noise, so I'll just give you an example. Okay, so obviously you're gonna hear that when I talk also, but we'll just try to get rid of it using the gate. Okay, so you get the idea is, is that that's obviously dramatic. I use white noise just to try to see if it'll work. It does work, but you just have to kind of adjust based on what your background sounds like. By the way, this is all defaulted right now. I'm going to look at some of the detail of it and explain what that does. But for the most part, if you're just getting started and not familiar with the technical side of what compression is on the backside, don't mess with the advanced features right now. Just use this as a default. All right, so denoiser, another one, self-explanatory. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just lower this gate. I'm actually going to use the same noise and see if we can get rid of it using the denoiser. All right, so what you'll notice right away is it doesn't completely remove the noise, but it does muffle the microphone all the way at 10. Now, if you don't have a lot of noise, just a little bit, I think ideally you wouldn't want to go past like six because it does affect the mic quite a bit. Uh, all right, let me stop that. So yeah, my, my sweet spot, spot typically, let me put this back on. I don't know where I had it, around four. My sweet spot, spot for the denoiser in voice meter is at about five. So I, I don't like to have too much of this just because it does a lot to the microphone. All right, so before I move on to the main part, which is the EQ, I'm gonna show you some of the advanced features um, now if you really want to get technical with this, you can. So a lot of this is based on timing, right? So, and, and then obviously the threshold. So the threshold is going to be how, how loud it needs to be to activate the compressor. So when you're, if you're looking at this top right here, normally on a normal compressor, like when I'm doing audio production, I don't want to have more than five to six dB of compression. Uh, it's a little bit different here. I noticed that it does compress it quite a bit, but it's really not, I don't know how to explain that. But so in this case, I wouldn't go more than 10 on compression. So let me boost this up. So yeah, you're already, I'm already peaking more than that. I wouldn't compress this more than 10. So if you just want to check this just to see where you're at, then feel free. It's basically doing too much to the audio and you don't want that. And again, all these ratios, attack, release, it's just timing. So, so I wouldn't necessarily change too much of this. It's not going to make a huge difference unless you really have a drastic change in your voice. All right. So that's compression. Now gate, same situation is all timing. Threshold on this is going to be how loud the background noise is. Let's say the background noise is negative 40. So if it gets above negative 40, like let's say it's negative 30, then the sound's going to be coming through. So what you want to do is make sure you have it to where the threshold's not reaching negative 30. But again, I wouldn't go more than maybe five on the here, which is about 35 dB. If you have anything louder than that, it's probably too much noise in the background, to be honest. So I think something to play with. Um, but yeah, a lot of this, again, it's just timing on when the door opens for the gate, when it closes, how long it takes, etc. Mess around with it if you want, but I wouldn't even touch it. Denoiser is just pretty basic. I wish that it did have some additional features like, like microphone adjustments, but it really doesn't. So I think we're good there. Okay, so EQ. Look, the thing that's different about EQ in Voice Meter Potato is you can actually EQ each one of your channels as well as EQ the main output, which I love. I'm just gonna EQ this channel 
So the first thing I always do with all my EQs is get rid of that low end and high end. Um, and I'll show you about where I do that. So let's go here. Uh, let's bring this, I'd say anywhere between this 50 to 60 range is where you want to cut. Now the EQ here doesn't, for some reason, if I had a high EQ, it cuts it quite a bit, which is typically what I'd want on the low end, but it is what it is. I'm, not, I'm really not too concerned because this mic doesn't really have a lot of bass, heavy bass. But yeah, again, this does depend on your microphone. If you have a microphone like the SM7B, which has heavy bass, you'd probably want to get rid of it a little bit more. So I'd, I'd bring it a little bit higher, but for the most part, this is as too, this doesn't have too much bass. Again, about that 50, 60 range. Just cut that out a little bit. What, what that's gonna do is get rid of some muddiness. And then on the high side, you're gonna want about the seven to 8,000 range to start to cut. That's just your high pitch noise. And a lot of this you won't even hear, but when you put it all together and you're processing it and you need to go louder, you're gonna pick up a lot of the muddiness and you just don't want that. Okay, so I did notice that this mic is pretty high frequency heavy. So kinda wanna boost up some of the bass on this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is probably around this seven, eight, about around this 100 range, about three dBs of gain on this uh, 100 range, 100 frequency range, um, just to give it a little bit of, now you can go higher if you want, but I wouldn't go too crazy with that because you are adding bass. So in order to counter that, we're gonna get rid of some mids because um, you, don't, you don't want a lot of that when you're messing with uh, a lot of bass. So we'll go, I'd say to about, so I'm gonna bring this down bring that down. I'm going to go to about, so I'm going to go to about 400, between 400 and 300. You got to find the sweet spot. Just listen to what your voice is telling you. And I'm just going to cut out about five dBs worth of that range. Um, there's some muddiness there. So, all right, moving on to the high frequency. So I'm going to look at increasing. Yeah. So for me, my sweet spot is around a 5,000 range. It's probably some of the best gain uh, you're gonna get for highs. You don't wanna go any lower than three, 2,000 cause that you're getting into the mid range. Um, so we'll do 5,000. I am increasing this. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get about six dBs here of gain. Now, what I like to do is this peaks here at the 5,000 range. So what I'm gonna do is kind of flatten it out. Uh, I'm gonna go about, yeah, 1.2 here, maybe one, that might be good too. So what it does is kind of just adds more of the frequency range and kind of gives it a, a clear sound. So, okay, so I did notice that the, there's a little bit too much brightness here. So I'm gonna dial that back a little bit and then I am gonna dial back this to negative two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Yeah. So I'm going to dial back the audio input coming through. Because remember, what you're doing is you're adding volume to those frequencies. So you want to make sure that you're not um, now overloading that compression. Um, you can get rid of about two or three dB and you should still be fine. Um, but I'm not peaking at all. So I'm not too worried. But you do want to get rid of some, just kind of level out the sound here. All right, so now let's just hear it without EQ. So this is without EQ, kind of flat. Again, this mic doesn't sound bad at all, but now when we add the EQ, it's really kind of brightening my voice, kind of bringing that liveliness to it. So, and again, it's not much in terms of what you have to do, but it makes a huge difference when you're talking to your stream or just making a video. The uh, EQ adjustments really matter. But again, this is a cheaper microphone, so don't expect the greatest sound quality compared to like a SM7B, which is kind of what everybody compares everything to, right? But just doing things like this will make a huge difference for you. That's pretty much gonna be it with the mic settings in Voice Meter Potato. 
um, as I said before, a little goes a long way, especially when adding EQ. So keep it simple, minor adjustments. You get your microphone sounding great. But again, if you have any questions, be sure to hit me up in the Discord. Be sure to subscribe for future videos, and I will see you guys in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,